perhaps one of the most obscure characters found in the expanded universe, the life and career of the Jedi Knight Jaden Kor is not one often explored by many. Jaden was first introduced during the events of the Star Wars Jedi Academy video game that took place during the rise of Luke Skywalker's New Jedi Order, which he established some time after Return of the Jedi. Kor had since then made his impact by arriving as a Jedi Initiate and rose to the rank of knighthood during the events of the Ragnos Crisis, which would accelerate his training under the Jedi Battlemaster Kyle Katarn, who regarded Kor as the greatest student he has ever trained. Kor's story would fully develop beyond the video game, with him becoming quite a prominent member within the New Jedi Order. The record of Jaden Kor is a tale that will never be lost to the sands of time, his story developing several years after his encounter with Ragnos, spanning across a duology of books. For this video, I wanted to share Jaden's story, as well as the meaningful events in his life that would shape his connection to the Force, turning him into one of the New Jedi Order's most powerful knights. With that being said, this is the legend of Jaden Kor. Arriving on the fourth moon of Yavin in the year 14 ABY, Jaden Kor was accepted to Luke Skywalker's Jedi Paraxium, where he would begin his training as a Jedi Padawan. Kor's Force abilities manifested during Jaden's time living with his uncle Orn on the planet of Coruscant. On that day, Jaden was guided by a vision through the Force that led him to construct his first lightsaber from the parts he was able to scrap together from his uncle's shop. His uncle would witness this, and from then on, Orn would enroll Jaden in the New Jedi Academy, where his journey would truly begin. Kor would be assigned under the apprenticeship of Kyle Katarn, along with fellow Padawan Rush Pennon, where they would both learn to understand the complex nature of the Force. Jaden's abilities became more apparent as his training progressed. From Katarn, Kor would also inherit extensive knowledge of the Three Rings of Defense, which would be the New Jedi Order's version of the seven lightsaber forms once practiced during the days of the Old Republic. The rings are broken down into three stances, known as Fast, Medium, and Strong Styles. Katarn, being the Order's Battlemaster, is heavily proficient in all three, though Medium Style would be a stance often used by the Jedi Master. Kor would also prefer the medium style as it would provide him with a perfect balance of speed and power which gave him the gifted ability of outclassing most lightsaber wielders at the height of his Jedi career. Jaden's success as a Jedi throughout the years granted him the trust of the masters of the re-established Jedi Council. He would serve as a knight during the Yuuzhan Vong War that would break out in 25 ABY, as well as participate in the Second Galactic Civil War instigated by Jason Solo, who during that time secretly went by the name of Darth Gaitis. During the Vong War, Kor would be assigned on a mission far away from Coruscant during the extragalactic species taking of the planet. Jaden would later come to find out after the fact that his uncle Orn was among the beings who fell during the invasion. Following the end of the Yuuzhan Vong War, Jaden would find himself on the search for his former master, who had vanished during an investigation taking place in a region of space known as the Cloak of the Sith. Kor along with Kyle's longtime partner Jan Ors had paired up with a team of Jedi Knights who successfully liberated Katarn from the clutches of the fallen Jedi Day Azur Jamin, who had taken Kyle captive, revealing later on the influence of a higher force in the form of a supposed force-sensitive Vong female who took hold of him and controlled his actions. Jaden's life as a Jedi would take him places he never expected to venture. There comes a time where every Jedi Knight must confront their own darkness within themselves, accept whatever comes with it and let go of that which no longer serves them. For Jaden Kor, the time would come where he would be called upon to fight beside the new Jedi Order at the start of the Second Galactic Civil War. The influence of Darth Kaitis allowed Jason Solo to become Chief of State of the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances. Solo intended to take control of the superweapon known as Centerpoint Station, however Luke Skywalker would foil his nephew's plan by distancing the new Jedi Order from the influence of politics and send in a Jedi Assault Force to infiltrate Centerpoint Station in order to disable the weapon before Kaitis could ever get his hands on that power. Jaden had been part of a strike team led by Kip Duran where he was placed in command of his own squad. Before the mission, with only a short time window, Kor received orders from Kip to advance quickly and leave no enemies behind. 
Unfortunately for Jaden's group, they would encounter stiff resistance from the Confederation forces, as well as a number of sympathizers. During the battle, the soldiers along with the station's crew were forced to retreat, leading them to lock themselves inside a cargo hold, preventing the Jedi from going further. With time working against them, leaving no room for negotiations or surrenders, Jaden made a split-second decision and opened the cargo hold, spacing two dozen soldiers along with the station's crew and the few Corellian sympathizers who found themselves trapped inside the cargo hold. Jaden would later come to deeply regret his actions. Even though he received orders from a fellow Jedi, he still felt an understandable guilt over the destruction of so many people over mere politics. Months after the war, Jaden Kor would exile himself from his close friends and from the New Jedi Order. He still resided on Coruscant, but opted to live out in an apartment outside of the Jedi Temple. Now in the year 41 ABY, on a Coruscant night, Jaden had experienced a powerful vision through the Force. During this state, Kor found himself on a frozen moon near a blue gas giant in the unknown regions. In this vision, Jaden was surrounded by voices of both Jedi and Sith, all calling his name. Most of these Force users were long dead, but still Jaden could recognize one of the voices. It was the voice of the deceased Mara Jade Skywalker, who told him to seek answers in what she referred to as the Black Hole, located on the planet of Faust. Once he regained his consciousness, he felt perplexed by Mara's instructions, though he still felt determined, hoping this would bring him some peace of mind. Jaden would travel to the planet of Foss, landing in the city of Farpoint. From there, Jaden would cross paths with a crew of salvage jockeys, who came across an automated distress beacon coming from a star system whose description matched the one from Kor's vision. On a place known as the Black Hole Cantina, Jaden would meet two salvage jockeys by the names of Ketron Fa'al and Mar Shael. Jaden would secure passage aboard the vessel known as the Junker after saving Fa'al from a rival scavenger and his counterpart who accused him of cheating on a game of sabak. During the altercation, Jaden was forced to kill the scavenger's partner which started a brawl that allowed Kor to save the two men. The two spacers agreed to bring Jaden along the frozen moon on the condition of a handsome reward after the journey. Upon arriving to the system, Jaden and the crew witnessed an unknown vessel exiting hyperspace moments after they arrived. It was when Jaden felt a powerful dark side presence emanating from the ship that he realized that the vessel was an ancient Sith dreadnought. Kor felt the dark side aura so strongly that faint discharges of force lightning started to emerge from Jaden's fingers. It would not be long before they would receive contact from an unexpected traveler from a distant past. A lawn escape pod had broken away from the ancient dreadnought and made its way to attaching itself to the Junker's Hall. Sensing the desperation of the person aboard the escape pod, Jaden ignited his lightsaber prepared to defend himself, but standing before him would be a mortally injured human male who lacked the right of his arm. Both would sense a strange feeling from one another, causing them to attack each other. Jaden couldn't help but notice that the man fought with a lightsaber unlike anything he had seen before. The saber was ancient in its design, and from what Kor could see, the saber was attached to some sort of cord that led to an energy pack found on the man's belt. Jaden would subdue the man by placing a well-timed kick to the man's midsection, which would send him flying across the room, and in the process cracking the uninvited passenger's ribs. After tensions began to die down, Jaden discovered the man to be a Jedi, but not one he would recognize. In fact, the man went by the name of Rillan Drur, a Jedi Master who claimed to have come from the era of the Great Hyperspace War, a conflict that took place over 5,000 years ago. Rillan would recount the events that had brought him there. He revealed that he along with his Padawan were on a mission to stop a shipment of a powerful ore known as Lignin, meant for the Sith Lord Naga Sadao himself. Drur explained that the ore possessed the energy to empower a Force user's dark side powers. Sadao foresaw a powerful army of dark side wielders empowered by lignin crystals found in their lightsabers. Relin had successfully sabotaged the hyperdrive, but was exposed to lethal amounts of radiation in the process. He would also go on to lose his arm at the hands of a fallen Padawan of his who had turned to the dark side and became a Sith. 
the Dreadnought even in this state was able to power up the hyperdrive, still managing to reach light speeds. Relinat also explained that his current battle on Drift Hasing had attempted to stop the ship from making the jump by flying their own ship into the Dreadnought's bridge, losing his life in the process. Durer had taken advantage of the chaos, reaching the escape pod. However, Relin's pod had not fully detached from the vessel and was pulled along with the ship. By Relin's description, the Dreadnought was going at light speed, but because of the damage and the fact that it was being held together by a Dark Force user attempting a suicide journey, the ship had not fully entered hyperspace, causing it to slingshot itself into Jaden Core's time. Jaden could sense that Relin was blinded by anger and grief during this time over the loss of his Padawan, and his encounter with his fallen one that would cost him his arm would only add fuel to the fire. He later realized that because of this fire, Relin could not call on the light side of the force to heal his wounds. He was already dead before he had arrived to the Junker. Jaden's encounter with Jur had made him see how far a Jedi can let himself fall if they give in to their intense emotions. Relin's self-destructive nature urged him to complete his mission. It hungered for revenge over the death of his Padawan. Kor would reflect on this experience later down the road as a way of keeping himself grounded in reality. Jaden Kor and Roland Dreher would part ways as Kor and Kedron would head for the frozen moon, while Mar helped Relin get back aboard the Dreadnought to finish what he started. It became evident that Kor's vision had led him to a long-forgotten Imperial site. Inside, he would discover the recordings of several scientists documenting their observations of Force-sensitive clones. The clone project would be greenlit by Admiral Thrawn himself, and it was now that all became clear for Jaden. The Force had led him to the discovery of these clones whose sole purpose was to wreak havoc upon the galaxy, as they had done so to the now deceased scientists who had fallen during the clone's brutal massacre of the facility and his staff once they became fed up with their enclosure. Jaden had encountered one of the clones still hiding within the facility. Recognizing the man's facial features, the clone had been a downgraded copy of the Jedi Master Cam Solasar, who went by the name of Alpha. It was evident that the clone had become feral from the way he growled and snarled at Jaden, and it would not be long before he would launch himself directly at Kor. Though the clone of Solasar's form was sloppy, he was still lightning fast. Nevertheless, Jaden's experience gave him the edge during this fight. However, in a split second and a mistiming from Jaden allowed the clone to sever three of Kor's fingers from his right hand. As exhausted as he was, Jaden was able to drop the deranged clone. The Jedi Knight would take it as his responsibility to search for the rest of the clones, with the crew of the Junker by his side and the blessing of Grandmaster Skywalker himself. During this time, Jaden had also discovered that one of his crewmen, Mar Irishael, had been inherently Force-sensitive this entire time. On Mar's request and Luke Skywalker's approval, Jaden had agreed to take on Mar as his apprentice. This marked the first time where Jaden would take on the role of Master, as he declined the title several years prior, stating that he felt himself not ready for what comes with it. However, things were different now, and the urgency of the situation required Mar to be brought up to speed on the basics of becoming a Jedi Knight. Jaden would gift Mar his first lightsaber, which he would use from then on as Core Speed trained his mind and body in order to adjust to the very nature of the Force. Their search for the clones would lead the three to an unidentified space station whose design matched the ones from the ancient times of the Rakatan Empire. At this point, it would be revealed that the clones had been led there by a malevolent influence who intended to transfer its consciousness into a physical form. The entity had led the displaced family of clones to the long-forgotten station under the guise that it would cure them from their fatal disease caused by their genetic alterations. It was revealed that many of the clones resembled the copies of well-known Jedi and Sith from that time. The clones would mirror the likenesses of Cam Solasar, Mara Jade Skywalker, the Dark Lady of the Sith Lumaya, and Kor's former master Kyle Katarn would be among the cloned victims. However, not all, all of the clones would survive the journey, with the remaining two being a small child by the name of Grace and the clone of someone that had shocked Jaden to its very core. One of the last of the surviving clones would be one of himself, who went by the name of Soldier. Long ago, the DNA of Jaden Core had been used as part of Throng's efforts to create a clone who could draw on the light and dark sides of the Force in tandem with one another. 
What had been unknown to Jaden is that his genetic makeup was still being used now in the efforts of the Rising One Sith Order, who had created another clone of Jaden known as the Iteration. The Iteration, along with an Umbaran creature devoid of the Force, had been tracking down Jaden for some time. The Iteration had taken advantage of a distraction caused by the station and was able to knock out Jaden cold. The Iteration had revealed that he possessed the device known as a Mind Sphere, which was created by the extinct Rakatan race, with the purpose of transferring one body's consciousness into another's. The Iteration had intended to insert Jaden's consciousness into himself in order to make his existence whole. The clone managed to stick the Mind Sphere onto Jaden's unconscious body, which would ultimately kill him then and there. During this, Jaden's apprentice was able to get the upper hand on the clone, being able to subdue him. A heartbroken Mar, thinking that his master was dead, used the Mind Spear with Jaden's consciousness on the iteration. The clone's resistance to the idea meant that the transfer still required more than what he had done, so Mar took the chance. After Mar had stuck the Jaden clone with the Mind Spear, he switched the diseased Jaden's robes with the iteration's attire, and even went as far as to cut the iteration's three right fingers in order to simulate the three fingers that Jaden had lost at the hands of Alpha. Mar wanted to leave the Iteration's body as close to the state that Jaden's body was at the time of his death, but Mar had no way of confirming which Jaden would appear. Luckily for him, the original Jaden Core's personality had surfaced, and now with the Jedi Apprentice duo complete, along with the powers of Soldier, they were able to hold back the malevolent entity, keeping its presence within the station, while the sabotaged engines of the clone space freighter leveled the station, burying what was left of a once dominant empire. From what I've gathered, Jaden Kor had left out the remainder of his life in this new body. Though it seemed that Jaden would disregard this encounter as a strange lucid dream, questions would arise in Jaden's mind as to how the wound of his hand would reopen itself. But this paled in comparison to what Jaden next discovered about his new self. A scar that he had gained during his time working in his Uncle Oren's shop was now gone. This would stay with Jaden as his journey ended following this life-altering event. This marks the end of the record of Jaden Core, as from this point on there would be no source of information found in the archives that documented the conclusion of Jaden's story. Nevertheless, his legend is one that should never be overlooked. Throughout his life, he was an overly philosophical kind of person, who would always look to find some sort of hidden meaning within the events that had transpired around him. This would cause him to grow with an immense doubt in himself, up until his encounter with the crew of the Junker. This new sense of family and what they had been through together had made Jaden realize that his constant questioning of himself and his actions is what kept him centered in reality. This is what kept the dark side from tainting his noble heart. He had vowed to never use force lightning again. He had no need for it anymore as he became a different kind of Jedi. As Kedron had once told Jaden, sometimes things just are what they are. This new change in core had reflected in the creation of a new lightsaber, powered by the crystal that had once belonged to Alpha. When Jaden had purged the crystal from its darkness, he recounted all of these events within the back of his mind. And to his pleasant surprise, the crystal had revealed the color of a bright yellow blade, referred to by Kor as a wonderful gift from the Force. Kyle Katarn had once said to Kor, there be dragons, a saying he would always reference. However, Jaden would find none, and would overcome his self-doubt, becoming a terrific Jedi. We have reached the end, my friends, but I would like to know your thoughts on this legend. For me, the character of Jaden Kor is among my personal favorites within the Expanded Universe, and I have always thought his career deserved more recognition, and the lore video. If you enjoy all of the Legends content on this channel, feel free to draw on the Force and press that like button, as it helps the channel become more apparent within the YouTube space. Take care everyone, and may the force be with you, and hopefully we meet again in our next video.